Let's say you have a patient who's a schizophrenic who you administered haloperidol to, which is a first-gen antipsychotic. They are now experiencing protrusion of their tongue, spasms of their facial muscles, and neck twitching or um, torticollis. They're having an acute dystonic rea reaction. Haloperidol is known to cause extrapyramidal side effects. A lot of the first-gen antipsychotics, because they target the dopamine 2 receptors, can cause extrapyramidal side effects. So we know that. Now, what drug do you give next? We don't simply just move on to another first-gen antipsychotic because they're all known to be causing dystonic reactions. Instead, what would I do? Haloperidol can be used in schizophrenia and Tourette's disorder. It can cause acute dystonic reactions. Haloperidol can cause tongue protrusion, trismus and torticollis. What exactly is acute dystonia? It's a sudden involuntary spasm which occurs in the body. First gen antipsychotics are high risk for acute dystonia because they're antagonizing the dopamine receptors and blocking dopamine in the nigrostriatal pathway. It can lead to more cholinergic symptoms because essentially you're getting less dopaminergic um, reactions or consequences in the human body. So one hypothesis is essentially we have increased cholinergic activity because the dopamine receptors are blocked. Alternatively, the basal ganglia require dopamine to function well. The basal ganglia need dopamine to carry out their voluntary motor control, their executive function, motor function, and the lack of dopamine might mean a lack of motor control. Now back to the clinical question, what drugs do you give next? I would change the medication to a second-gen antipsychotic because second-gen antipsychotics are more serotonergic than dopaminergic. They're not, if, they're, if they're not antagonizing the dopamine receptor as much, then they're not going to be causing those extrapyramidal side effects, will they? So second-gen antipsychotics have more potent effect on 5-HE2A serotonin receptors and they have a lower binding affinity for the dopamine receptors, therefore having a reduced extrapyramidal side effects. This is very important to know and it's good to understand. Thanks for listening.